our lord. Forgive not these men their trespasses. Send them instead to the same hell they brought upon our land. Did you kill these men? These defilers killed themselves by despoiling this sacred ground. God told me the full tale. Then he told me to chastise them. And he has told me much about you, too. Hand down, Saxon. I mean you no harm. You're bleeding, Dunghill! Go to hell! May God strike you down! Tell me again, what did your God say about me? My God names you the Crow Eyed Devil. <laughs> And he sends out his angels to find you and to kill you. And then they will fling you into the pits of hell, demon. Fear, <laughs> please. We'll die without blood meat. What troubles you, friend? Why won't the seer answer your call? I know not, but without her drafts, my family is doomed. Freya, but please, show me a sign. You have my thanks, kind one. Your wounds are grave. Should you not rest in bed, I'll carry you home. It is no wound, but the blood is mine. I made the potion, Freya's blessing, to help the crops grow. Blood meat. Good. You know of it. From my pain, life springs. Ah, uh, please, help me to the clearing. The field needs the blood meat. There's a farmer at your house who needs it as well. She waits desperately for your return. Oh no. But my fields. If I fail in my task, the harvest is doomed. Please, bring me to the next bloodstone. Seer! The pain surges. But I must finish the ritual. I could take her to the next bloodstone. She could finish the rite. Or I could bring her back to her house where the farmer wakes. Here's the place. Are you strong enough to finish the ritual? I am. Though I must rest. Then I will chant and sow the blood meat. A task I must perform alone. I understand. What else can I do? You've done enough, and for that I thank you. But return in a few days, and see the ripening fields. I shall. Farewell, Sia. May the gods watch over you, kind one. Farewell. Hide and hunt is a true warrior's game. It is good that you play it. Then play with us. This lot's easy, but you'd be hard to find. Go hide with the others. 
after the count, I'll seek you out like the mighty wolf Fenrir. Everyone hides while I count down. And after the count, I will seek you out. Everyone, go hide. Stay in the village. Outside the village, out of bounds. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here I come. My keen wolf nose is picking up a scent. Giant, you won the game. I lie not. You won. I surrender, Giant. <laughs> the Giant is the champion. The hider in shadows. The one who lurks unseen. Farewell, children. Play well and stay warm. A warrior's game. In these times, even children must hide from two-legged wolves. Do not think the horse can hear you. That horse can't hear anything. So how does he... Uh, how did Father do it then? The horse always comes when he summons it. Father was a good horse summoner, I'll have you know. And I'll ride in his stead. <gasps> I, the great summoner Aster, call to you, my noble steed skin. Easy, girl. To me! Ha, my summoning works. 
Your horse is a little unsettled, but safe. I, Esther the Great Summoner, first of a name, thank you. <laughs> Next time, summon a bridge. If father was still alive, he would be proud of me. Wouldn't he, Skin Farley? Wait, what did I call you earlier? <laughs> Maybe the horse will have a better life now. What a handsome cat. Hello, friend of Freya. What's wrong? Hey, Nolly, come back, you snake. Here, little one. Ah, oh, hey. No, stop. Oh, pig poop. You ran off again. Cats are free spirits, aloof and haughty, like the goddess Freya. I know, but ever since old Cotter died, that old sea cat has run wild, scaring the chickens and scratching me. Ah, ship's cats are good luck. Do you need help catching him? Oh, yes, please. Got you, little mouse spider. Wow! Nolly hasn't let anyone touch him since old Cutter died. But he sure loves you. Do you want to join my crew, Nolly? You would make a fine raider, I think. Every longship needs a brave cat for luck. And for the rats. Looks like I have another radar. Mm, such exquisite fletchings. Fitting feathers for a king slaying. Desecrated a martyr's place. Hold, stranger! Show me... Why are you so passionate about these arrows? When Father James blessed the late King Edmund, he blessed that holy throne and all upon it. The blessing did not take. That depends on your opinion of King Edmund. I wonder... I have studied those arrows, but never dared touch them. But since you plucked them anyway, would you sell them to me? If they are as you say, then I will keep them. They may prove of use later. I would pay heavy coin for them. I'm a sage, a chronicler of histories. Return to me if you desire riches. Hold, stranger! Show me those arrows. Still looking to buy arrows? More so now than ever. I'm willing to sell, but the King Edmund arrows might be mixed up with my own. I've the eye of an archivist, able to sort new from old. The kingdom's history shall be restored. Just sell them all to me. These arrows are the very same that pierced good Saint Edmund. I must study these ho- These arrows are the very same that pierced good Saint Edmund. I must study these holy relics. Thank you. are well said. You have stocks for a hundred moons. You will live a long and hearty life. But father, you are not too ill to stay. But I am. The weavers have sent me many portents. I only await a proper death till the family acts of honor passes to you. <laughs> The air is filled with the smell of fish guts. Your catch appears generous. Your nets overflow with silver stock. You are lucky. 
Good warrior, you carry yourself with the spirit of a Drengar. I am a Drengar too. In fishmonger slacks. Is this your way of hiding? Or protecting those around you? My life has had many chapters. Ragnar Lothbrok himself started as a farmer, you know. He often envied my choice. You rode with the great army of Ragnar? I did. And it was here in England that I saw a land so fertile you could spit and food would grow. Water steaming with fish. I met a Saxon lady, Athelswig, and we have made a fine life for ourselves. The best clams in all of East Anglia. But now I must show my son the way of the Drenger. How to die with honor. I respect your desire for an honorable death. I want my son to watch. He should have the final word when I pass. He will not see me die on a bed, coughing like a crow. I accept your fight. We will show your boy how Drenger do their bidding. Do you hear this, son? Today you will see the color of the blood that made you. The color of courage and honor above all. Any weapon will do! Now you see, son, we are Drenger. Its heat returns to me. Watch me, son. A true Drenger can win a battle with a twig or a stone. Reached the glory gate. Think of me, my boy, my dear love. Now, you know. Father, I. I understand. I see the glory you spoke of. Go now to Valhalla and join Ragnar in the war eternal. Your father is a fine warrior, a Drenger to the end. One day. I will honor him, and make of myself a Drenger.
of your horses. Roland, Holger, why all this shouting? I demand that this matter be settled here and now. Have patience, Rowan. There is a time and a place for such disputes. Eivor, thank Tyr. I heard shouting. Is something wrong? Holger robbed me, and I demand he be punished. Ha! Huh. Rot this appointed word! Does the deer rub the stream when she takes a drink? Does the cow rub a field when he crops on sweet grass? Eivor, this matter requires sensitive judgment. Will you? Of course. From the beginning, please. Well now! There is no excuse too small, I see. Nothing to keep you from coveting that seat, is there? In Sigurd's absence, who has better claim to oversee these disputes? You might leave them to work it out for themselves, but that would mean... letting go, would it not? Please start again. Tell me all that has happened. I will start. I have been falsely accused by this Saxon Philistine. A Philly what? Are you mocking me? Silence, please. I will hear both of your complaints and render a decision, awarding compensation if needed. Understood? Rowan, tell me your version of these events. As you are aware, Holger and I are neighbors. Near enough that I often catch him at my stables, stealing my tools. Borrowing! Holger, let him speak. Stealing, borrowing... My point being, I have always allowed him to use whatever he pleased. I greatly admire your Norse generosity and had hoped to match it. But this morning, Holgir stretched the limits of my grace. Entering my stables for their feed, I found my most beautiful, gentle mare stripped of her tail. Bereft, not a strand in sight. I am ashamed to say my natural suspicion drew me to Holgir and how right I was. For when I peered across the lane, there he was, gripping a horsetail brush slathered with indigo, dragging it across a sheet of painting, Rohan. I was painting. You make it sound so crude. You see? Such willful arrogance. It will take ages for Ilgafu's tail to reach its former length. I demand compensation. I understand. Thank you, Rohan. Holger, let me hear your sight. Eivor, you have known me as a skald for years. You have seen how my poems bring life and joy and wisdom to our people. And you know that my work requires a certain, let us say, freedom. To make use of rare resources to compose my verses. Often when lacking the proper tools, I have made use of novel items. Alvis's walking stick. Tovi's inks? All were given gladly. You cut off my horse's tail to make a brush, you bleed- Rowan? As I was saying, this morning in the throes of poetic reverie, I realized that my latest piece required delicate brushwork. I could have used a frayed stick, some cloth, my hands, but no. I needed something gentler, softer. To make a perfect brush, I needed the fine hairs of a well-raised horse. And so I availed myself of a local resource. You clipped Alfgafu's tail to the rump without asking. It was early. I did not wish to wake you. Thank you, Holka. I believe I understand your position. I believe I have heard enough. If you will... My horse looks like a fool, Eivor. No handsomer than a donkey now. You must do something. Do not conflate hair with beauty, Rowan. She remains radiant. Elgifer's hair will grow back in no time. Quiet, both of you. Now listen. Holger, Rowan is clearly in the right. You shared the tail from his horse without gaining permission. I borrowed the tale! Borrowed! Does the reality of regrowth not make this a victimless crime? It is a two-victim crime, Holger. Though they are unharmed, you took without asking, and that will not do. As the horse's value has diminished significantly, you will pay Rowan its market price. But 
The horse was not for sale. Rowan, admit it. My decision is final, Holger. Pay what you owe, and meet tomorrow as friends. And if I do, may I keep the horse? Pay the man and be done with it. Rowan, does this satisfy you? It does. Thank you, Eivor. Good. Then by Tyr's blessing, let this matter rest. We're done here. Return to your homes in peace. Would you allow me to pay you with a vibrant painting? After all, in some ways you helped in its creation. Absolutely not. Silver is the only color I wish to see from you. Oh, hello, Eivor. Good day. That Holger, he is quite a character. I almost envy him. To see the world through such a muddy glass, and live with such petty concerns, he hasn't a care in the world. Let's not walk too far with that idea. I need you right where you are. East Anglia is with us. Their King Oswald has pledged his loyalty to us. Eivor Kingmaker, we shall call you soon. Some interesting news. King Chilvulva sent Chilbert to Shropshire. He hopes to install him as Elderman there. Good for Chilbert. He should do well considering all he has learned from you. I gave him only a taste of my knowledge. The rest he will need to figure for himself. One more thing. I do not know if you heard, but Sven passed away a short time ago. The poor man slipped away in his bed. I had not heard, no. And how is Tovi? She must be gutted. It has been rough on her. She spends quite a lot of time at his burial mound. Speak with her, if you have the time. I don't know how to draw without your hand to guide me. Tovi. Eivor, it's Sven. He... he passed while I was away. Tovi, I'm sorry I wasn't there. No one was. We had planned to brand Tekla's barrels that morning, and we talked about what we might have for supper. And when I went to collect him, he was in his bed, sleeping, I thought. But he was already gone. I'm sure he went in peace. But he went with plans. Things he wanted to do, things he meant to do. His death was so... Empty. Not like in our stories. When we tell stories, the old and wise, they have this calm about them. They know when their end has come and they are ready. Sven wasn't ready. And I wasn't ready either. He was supposed to teach me things. I'm still learning. Everyone looks at me like I will simply carry on his work. As if nothing happened. Because they don't know. They don't know I'm not ready. Life may ask more of us than we are prepared to give. But all we can do is our best. Hmm. I was not prepared to lose my parents. But in a flash, they were taken from me. I pressed on, determined to live. That must have been punishing. But you are so strong, and so determined. Someone else might have done better than me, or worse. But this was the fate woven for me, so I live it. I know Sven believed in you, in your craft. So do you believe in him? Do you trust him? He was the most skilled artist I have ever known. And he chose you. You may step up or step down, whatever you decide. But know that he had faith in you. Thank you, Eivor. I need to get home. Be strong, Tovi. And know you are valued.
I am sorry I was not here to see you off, old friend. Landry, are you well? You seem distant. I'm fine. Only a little tired, but well enough. Shall we look at the map? Not until you tell me what is wrong. Oh, I think I have. I feel somewhat trapped. In this room, and this settlement, and this life. I cannot help you with your life just now, but... I can get you out of this room. What do you say? I don't know. There is much work to be done. Stop. Forget about alliances and responsibility for just a few hours. We could take a ride to Grand Bridge or somewhere nearby for a change of pace. That sounds lovely and too far to consider just now. But thank you, Eivor. Maybe another time. Now, what was it you needed? Ranvi, take a break. Let us make for Grand Bridge Shire and get you out of this musty room. Do you mean now? Right now? Of course. You said you were tired of all this, so why not stretch your legs and fill your lungs? I did ask, didn't I? You're right. Lead the way, Eivor. Follow me. We won't take the longship today. This trip is for us. Just you and me. Is that a problem? Not at all. So long as I get some air and sun, I will be fine. I spend too much of my day in the Longhouse. We will need to cross the river at some point if we want to enter Grand Bridgeshire. If you know a better way, I would love to hear it. Is swimming not an option? Swimming? I don't know. Uh, are you joking? A boat or a horse would always do, but I'm not opposed to the more traditional methods. It really is lovely here. I have not been this far east of the settlement. Isn't that awful? You think safety awful? To live one's life in so small a pen, hear stories from you and the scouts without ever venturing further. <laughs> Gods, do you smell that? The earth and the air. It is good to be out here. Eivor, there. What is that? This is where the summer army retreated when Grantobridge was lost. They seem to have resettled the city in full now. Right, right. I know this land so well by its map, but to see it in person brings it to stunning life. A Roman marvel. I will not soon forget this sight. And here we are. Welcome to Grand Bridge. We should make our way to the Longhouse. Ah, oh, it's bigger than I imagined. Rustic, woody, beautiful, and everything seems quite new. Under Soma's guidance, the Summer Army built this town up from a small village. They wanted a hub for trade near London, and a launching point for incursions into Wessex. Well, it is impressive. Some interesting architectural ideas here, too. Well, well, well! It's that Eivor I see. It's been quite a while since I've seen your face around here. I know you, I think. One of Soma's loyal men. Magni, is it? Yeah. Good memory. Good to see you again. This is Randvi, a dear friend and a sturdy fighter. Well met, Randvi. Eivor seems to have a preference for befriending lovely women. You know, I noticed the same thing. I expected more people about Magni. Has something happened? Soma rounded up some warriors and took them west. She's hoping to open a new trade route with Ox and Avoda. Only now, in times of trouble, I have discovered I am not the surrogate leader I should hope to be. What sort of trouble? Oh, a pack of surly bandits have been kept nearby. To the east of the water's edge. They attack all merchants who travel here by river or road, and word is spreading quickly. It's keeping traders at bay. That could cripple your town if it carries on too long. <laughs> it's crippled me already. The bastard stole my horse yesterday morning. So what will we you... We can take care of them, Magni. And if we don't find your horse, we will steal you a new one. Well, that would ease my mind. 
I have nothing to offer you for this deed, but the bandit surely would. Take from them what you like. Good. Consider the matter handled. Eivor, come. We have a camp to raid. The bandits are camped on the river, he said. East of the water's edge. You volunteered us for a fight, Randvi. Is that your idea of a pleasant ride through the country? It must be. I surprised even myself. Away from the table for a day and already you are lusting for blood. A feeling you must know well, no? I have always wanted to experience the world as you do, and now I will. Unless you have a more interesting day planned for us. We will help Magni and clear these bandits. But do not be rash when we find them. The Raven Clan needs your steady hand. Yes, indeed, my lord. I shall follow your order to the letter. If I did not know any better, I would say you are teasing me. Oh, certainly not, Eivor Wolf kissed Iron Fisted Drenger. I would never tease one with such commanding authority. There, the bandit camp. All right, stay close and do as I do. Rude and look sternly at the horizon? By all means. You wanted to do this in secret. You seemed hot for a battle, so here we go. We can handle this. Done. Now to deliver Magni his horse. was a thrill, Eivor. We are champions of Grand Bridge. Do you know of any other towns that need liberating? You don't think we have had enough drama for one day? We should return to the settlement. Or we could have a drink to celebrate our victory. At home. Tekla has all the mead and ale we could want. Eivor, our outing has hardly begun. Find us an alehouse and let us make ourselves at home. Let's return the horse. And if your thirst remains, we'll look around. Magni, we solved your bandit problem. Did you? Well done! And did you find my sweet mare? Your horse is outside, waiting for you. Thank the gods she is safe. And thank you, Eivor. And your friend Randvi, wherever she is. She is here somewhere. Over here! Look at this! Ah ho! Someone is thirsty! Are you determined to get drunk? I am determined to get you drunk. Come on. Scared I will outpace you. 
to be on. What are you playing at? A drinking contest. You versus me. Wolfkist versus Table Maiden. Ranvi, we can do better than Table Maiden. Mead Queen, then. All right. Let us drink. Beautiful. Not have tried to outdrink me, Randri. It cannot be done. Hmm. Strange. I see your lips moving so rapidly, yet all I hear is, "Thank you, Randvi." So, are you satisfied? My head is ringing like a bell. More than satisfied. Now come, we'll ride this off and take in the air as we head home. After just one more stop. Ah, oh, Randvi. It's a sunken tower near a waterfall, close to home. We can stop for a look, and then you are free of me. It's near the highest point of a hill, just south of the settlement. Easy to spot, I'm sure. All right, one last stop then. I know it might not show, Eivor, but I am terribly excited. Oh, it shows. Leaving already? Well, I do hope to see you again. Randy, return any time. I might have to, Magni. Thank you. I think you may have punctured poor Magni's heart back there. What can I say? Not the first, and it will not be the last. I name you Randvi, slayer of bandits and breaker of hearts. I will sound it with pride. Sunivar described this tower for me. A desolate yet peaceful place. Hey! I am eager to see it. After a full day of action, finally you wish to calm down. I've had my fill of adventure. Time for a little rest. I was wondering something. You and Soma. Was there something more to your bond? You spoke of her with a particular shine in your eyes. We grew very close, very quickly. Is that what you mean? No, I mean, did something happen between you two? What sort of question is that? An innocent one. Innocent as a newborn babe. Nothing happened between us. That is my answer. <clears> hmm. <throat> I find that disappointing. If I were you, I might have tested the waters. Eivor, entangled by a hardy Jarlskuna as she leads her army to victory and prosperity. A rather appealing match. <laughs> I'm going to pretend your last words were taken by the wind, Radvi. If you must. Look there. That must be the tower. Take the bridge. Just as beautiful as Sinever's stories tell. Can you imagine how it looked when it was first built, hundreds of winters ago? Sometimes when looking at a map, I imagine little people in their little armies, traversing the land. And now, staring at these ruins, I imagine people of old, how they lived, never knowing what would become of their monuments. You have a fertile imagination. I want a view from the top. Shall we? 
Lead on. Keep up! Mind where you put your fingers. These stones are old and weathered. You climb well for one who folds maps. You jest, but I have raised the frames of longhouses and hammered the ribs of longships. My hands are calloused from hard work. Well, well. Look at this. A stunning view. It reminds me of my early years in Norway. How I used to climb the hills beyond the wood. You have an adventurous heart. I hardly see it behind the table, but... Now I've watched you scale a tower in furs, soaking wet. I was rowdy in my youth. Hunting. Sailing. I was a wildling of the open air, before I became this staunch and stoic woman. Married off in service of peace between two clans. A noble and worthy role, but not one I had ever imagined for myself. You would have made a fine wandering warrior. A Jomsvikinger, free to come and go as she pleased. I think so too. It may be we would have sailed together, over the open seas, raiding or traveling. Or faced each other on the field of battle. Without your marriage to Sigurd to secure peace, our clans might still be at war. True. Very true. Thank you for today. Every bit of it has been a dream and... and I'm not keen to wake. Then don't. We can stay here as long as you like. Yes. What was that? Oh, no, I am... I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. I got away from myself. No need to apologize. Sigurd is your brother, and I... I have put you in a very difficult position. The heart does not do politics like the head. It may be the meat, it may be the air, but there's no need to apologize. <laughs> I am sober enough. But the truth of it is... I have felt this way for some time now. I care for you, Eivor. I am honored by your feelings, Ranvi. But I value you as a friend. I hope that does not disappoint. It is my highest praise. Of course. Thank you. I do apologize. You need feel no shame. This stays between us. And at worst... We have had a beautiful day, as friends and kindred spirits. More than enough for me. I would like to stay here, if it is all the same to you. I would like that. Andre? Hmm. Must have returned to the settlement. Nice to see you. Eivor. Randvi, why did you leave? We could have returned together. We could have, but I was... restless. A quiet walk alone clears the head. And you do snore a little. Like a wounded bear. <laughs> That's a lie. I had a wonderful time, Eivor. Thank you for your company. And your friendship. And you, for yours. Now, shall we get back to it? I should go. 